Hey, what's up guys? Tech and Tweaks back again with another video. I just finished watching WWDC 2020. It looks like iOS 14 is about to be awesome. It looks like they stole a bunch of features from the jailbreak community, which is normally what Apple does when they need to find new features. But I can't complain because they stole some of the most awesome features that you can steal from jailbreaking. It looks like we're now going to have widgets. So in the demo, it showed Craig putting widgets on his home screen. There looks to be a bunch of adaptable widgets, depending on what time of the day it is. Supposedly it uses machine learning to figure out what widget to show you at a specific time of the day based on your habits. There's also a section for categorized apps. It looks like it just takes a bunch of your applications that are similar and categorizes them so that you can find them easier to help you navigate through iOS faster instead of just having a bunch of pages of apps or folders with endless apps in them categorized apps will now be all grouped up in one specific location called app library another great feature that they brought over from the jailbreak is picture in picture on iphone i don't know why that took them so long to bring that over but that is a great feature that is going to be welcomed on ios 14. i'm sure a lot of you have been waiting for that feature a lot of you that do not have a jailbreak will be excited for that feature Another great feature is Compact Siri. It comes up in little cards at the top of the screen or the bottom of the screen. Instead of taking up your whole entire display, it makes it a lot more user friendly so that you can continue doing whatever you're doing on your screen without having Siri take over the whole device. They also seem to have a Translate app that is competitive to Google Translate. It looks like you can have a full conversation in two different languages. So if you're in another country and you need to communicate, this application will be coming in stock on iOS 14. Another cool feature of the Translate app is it automatically detects what language is being spoken. Messages also got some awesome updates. You can go ahead and pin your messages now at the top of your messages app. There are specific inline replies that can help you follow the conversation instead of everyone just typing all at once. You can now directly mention a person so that they know that you are speaking directly to them just by typing their name. So you can specify who you're talking to in a group. Looks like the Maps app has also been updated in iOS 14. They are now saying it's competitive to Google Maps. I would love to test that out. I do like the interface on Apple Maps. However, I feel like it's just lacking as far as the development goes. Google Maps is just miles ahead of Apple Maps. But they have said that they have been working on Apple Maps for iOS 14 to make it more accurate. I guess it's also coming to Ireland, Canada, and the UK. They also have a new cycling feature for Apple Maps. It will automatically detect the elevation so that you can see if there's an incline or anything like that while you're cycling. You can also detect to see if you are going to need to take stairs and carry your bike up and down the stairs. They've also added some EV routing, so electric vehicle routes, so that if you have a vehicle that needs to charge on the way, it will go ahead and take you the specific route with chargers so that you do not run out of juice while you are traveling and it also has the charging stops indicated on the maps app itself carplay also has some new options it has some wallpaper options that you can set now for carplay it has parking features to determine where you are parked it also shows ev charging locations car keys is a digital nfc reader that will allow you to enter your vehicle using the native NFC chip embedded into your iPhone. This feature is coming out on the 2021 BMW 5 Series first, but supposedly they will be updating it to support all of the newer cars coming out also. Another cool feature with that is you can go ahead and share key access to other people on their iPhones. So if you have a friend who needs to borrow your car, you can go ahead and give them limited access or full access. Same thing if you're a parent and you would like to give your teenager limited access to your vehicle. That seems like it can be extremely useful. They also announced a couple new features for App Store. 
they have a new feature called app clips it basically is just a 10 megabyte or less version of the app that will allow you to use that specific portion of the application to purchase things or to discover new things also with the app clips you can just go ahead and sign in with apple so if you've never downloaded that application before and you don't have an account you can just tap the sign in with apple button and it will automatically set everything up for you very smoothly so that you don't have to download the full application and make an account in order to use it Moving on to iPad OS, it seems that they have a new sidebar feature that they've added to multiple apps where you can just drag and drop different things within the sidebar. So it makes multitasking more like a computer instead of like a mobile device. They also have the compact Siri and the calls are also compact so that you can not have all of your calls take up the whole entire iPad screen. This also works on non-native apps such as Skype or any VoIP call methods that may be used on your iPad. They implemented a universal search feature on the iPad so that you can just start typing for anything that you would need to find on your iPad and it will automatically search the entire device for it. So you can do something specific like a photo or something more broad like an internet search. The Apple Pencil has a new scribble feature that will recognize exactly what you're writing down and put it into text. You can also write into search fields or different areas of the OS and the device will automatically convert what you're writing into plain text. And it seems that AirPods Pro also get a small update that will allow automatic switching between devices. So if you have a call coming in on your iPhone, it'll automatically connect to your iPhone if you were previously listening to a YouTube video on your iPad. It seemed to be pretty seamless and really cool. There's also spatial audio that they have implemented into AirPods. There will be an upcoming feature in the future. Basically, it just uses algorithms to determine the positioning of your device and your head positioning to that device to have spatial audio all around you so that you can have basically a surround sound experience. HomeKit seems to have a couple updates also. The HomeKit app will now have some adaptive lighting that you can adjust. So in the morning, it can start off with some warmer colors while in the midday, it'll go to a daylight setting. And then towards the evening, it will filter out the blue light. They also mentioned that the HomeKit cameras will have facial recognition based on the contacts in your device. So if you have a specific photo for a contact and that person is at the door, it can notify you that it is that specific person based on the facial recognition. But that's pretty much it for the iOS updates. If you guys are super excited for iOS 14, go ahead and feed the YouTube algorithm those like buttons. I'm super excited that Apple decided to take call bar pretty much and make it a stock feature on iOS because I hated the call screen taking up my whole device. Also, it's great that Siri is compact and widgets are finally here. I feel like widgets have been wrongly done on iOS. Nobody slides over to look at their widgets on this view right here. Everyone would rather just have widgets right on the home screen. It makes a lot more sense just to do it that way. Also, picture in picture on iPhone is also a great feature that I'm super excited for because that feature has been missing for so long. It's such a great feature on iPad and I'm happy to see that it's finally coming to iPhone. Anyways, guys, go ahead and leave a comment down below on which feature you're most excited about for iOS 14. And with that being said, don't forget to feed the YouTube algorithm those like buttons and I'll catch you in the next one. Thank you.